All right, hey there, fellow coders. Welcome to this next lesson in our series, our Fresh Votes series. Uh, in the last one, if you you know didn't watch it, be sure to go back and watch the previous video. Uh, we created some entities, so two to be exact, the feature and the user uh, entities, and then we fired up our um, server to make sure that it created the tables uh, appropriately in our database. Um, and I forgot to show you in my SQL, if you open up uh, or the workbench, at least that's what I'm using right now. I've also used Toad in the past, whatever, you know, SQL IDE you want to be using, go right ahead. Um, let me go ahead and I'm already connected. No, not that one. I want to connect to fresh votes. Where did I go? Let me ref refresh all these guys and see so many databases, fresh votes. There it is. Let's start from users. There we have it. And if we go, actually, we can just expand tables. You see there's feature and there's users tables. So we, we did get those tables created successfully. Um, they're empty right now, so that's perfectly fine. So now what we want to do is we want to create the join tables. We're going to start to introduce the uh, relationships. And these join tables, since they're many-to-many -many relationships, they're a bit more complex than, than the normal one-to-many. Uh, typically, one-to-many is, is usually the most uh, prevalent type of relationship. Um, but it just so happens that we have two many to many relationships in this case, which are not as prevalent and there's just a little bit more code that's needed uh, to create them, but that's okay. Uh, I'm not afraid of that challenge. So let's go ahead and create uh, our many to many relationship. Now, what you would normally do um, is you would normally uh, put in the relationship right into your um, class itself. But in this case, uh, we're not doing that because uh, I believe, uh, anyway, because we're going to be doing a many-to-many -many relationship where we are actually going to be mapping additional columns into the relationship table. So because we're adding new columns into this relationship table, we actually need to create a new entity for it. So if this is just a, if this was a basic, I should say a basic many-to-many -many relationship, um, then maybe this would look different, but because we are, we are adding custom uh, columns into our many-to-many -many tables, this is the situation that we find ourselves in. So anyway, I know I did a little bit of a roundabout there in my, my teaching, but anyway, well, you'll see exactly what I mean as I'm creating this stuff. So let's go ahead and create the uh, votes table. So the votes table, uh, we are going to, and there goes my Spring Dev Tools rebooting my server for me, but I'm going to stop it for now. Um, the votes table, um, I think you mark it as embeddable. Uh, yeah, you mark it as embeddable. And uh, I think you mark it as an entity as well, uh, I believe, anyway. Again, I'm going off of um, my memory here, and that's okay. I'll, I'll go off my memory, and if it, if it, if we go astray, I'm letting you know up front, I'm going off memory here, so I believe this will work, um, but let's push forward. So basically uh, on the votes table, let me flip over to my, uh, my diagram here, the votes table, oh, I should say it's a vote table. Sorry, I shouldn't have an S there. The only S we have is on users because of the name collision with the users table in the MySQL database. Um, the vote table will have the relationship uh, features of it, the relationship and uh, part of it, and then the upvote. And the upvote will be a Boolean. So we'll just create the upvote. Not update. Boolean upvote. Okay. Getters and setters. I'm going to rename this with Alt-Shift-R is the uh, shortcut key for renaming. And I'm just going to drop the S and hit Enter. There we go. And then I'm going to create... Uh, what is known as an embedded ID. So the embedded ID is, is, uh, is we need to create it as an embedded ID because it's a composite key. It, it, it contains, um, oops, I don't know why it does that. Let me flip through all my, there we go. Yeah, it, uh, it contains both um, IDs here as foreign keys, the user ID as well as the feature ID. So those two combined are composite keys. So let's bring that up, move this over to, on my other screen. So maybe I don't have to go through that weird functionality. I'm finding bugs in other people's software all day today. Uh, so um, we need a name for this. This is going to be an object. It's going to be an actual object that contains those two uh, foreign keys. So the object, we'll call it vote ID. Okay. This will be a Java, script, a Java object. And we'll call it, uh, I usually call it PK because that's, that's what makes up the primary key of this table um, is the vote ID. You could also call it ID 
if you wanted to, but I don't know, for some reason, PK, I don't know. I think that's an example I've seen many times on the internet. That's what people call it. So that's what I ended up calling it. So fair enough. So we'll create that class vote ID. Okay, it's just another plain old, you know, Java class. Um, but in this in this time, uh, in this case, we're going to call or we're going to annotate it with embedded ID, I think embedded ID or something. Hmm. Embeddable. Oh, there's some sort of so I think I might need to look this up, which is kind of annoying. I thought I could do this off the top of my head, uh, but that's OK. So we'll do um, JPA. JPA uh, embedded ID. Embedded ID. Isn't that what I was typing in? Embedded ID. That's what I typed in. Huh. Okay. So we'll see. Maybe this is just a weird situation, a weird error or something. Because, um, yeah, embedded ID is totally the. There's entity. ID class, embedded ID, embeddable. Oh, so I had it the other way around, it looks like. Although that's not the, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, so embeddable is the ID and embedded ID is the, okay. So that's why I had them backwards. So fair enough. So if you saw what happened there, again, I warned you, this is off the top of my head, embeddable, is a supposed to be a class level or a um, a what should we call it a sorry embeddable <laughs> it's the class level there we go embed embedded ID is the instance variable level there we go whoo that was hard for me to explain okay so you see what I did there I switched the two embedded ID is, and it makes sense because it has the word ID in it and this has the word ID in it. But anyway, I guess it doesn't really count because then this has the word ID in it as well. So you can see how I get these two mixed up. In any case, now we're in a situation where this is correct. This is the embeddable object. And this is just comprised of um, the foreign keys, right? But in this case, we actually want the entire objects as to, to represent the keys itself. So we have a, I think it's a user. And we have a uh, feature, right? So we have feature ID and user ID, right? So, but we wanna, instead of pulling in just a long values, we're pulling in the entire objects. So create a getters and setters for this. But then what these are, are just many to one relationships. Okay, remember how I talked about this in the, um, let me bring up my handy dandy diagram. Um, I explained how uh, in this diagram, the users is a one-to-many relationship to the uh, user ID in the vote table. And therefore the user ID is a many-to-one relationship from the vote table back to users. Many-to-one, which is why this is many-to-one because we're in the vote table and we're mapping back to the user. And same goes for the feature, many-to-one, okay? So let me go back to uh, this example and see, is there anything I was missing here? Embeddable, okay, probably need to implement serializable because of the way it's set up. Entity embedded ID, is there any other um, magic that needs to happen? It doesn't look like it. Okay, so I think we're safe now. I think I've got the uh, logic created uh, properly. I think we should also make this implement serializable. Uh, this becomes a problem later on, so I'm just gonna solve it now by adding a generated serial ID like so, uh, it just generates a random number for you. So that's all that is. And uh, okay, so now we have our, our primary key, our vote ID here, which is an embedded ID. So that should work for creating the join table. So let's go ahead and um, let's say, or relaunch our, our code and see if it creates that join table appropriately. Okay, there's a problem. What is the problem? Could not determine, determine type for, uh, Fresh votes domain feature at table vote for column feature. What did I mess up? Could not determine type for feature at table vote. Vote ID feature 
many to one feature Okay, I don't see the pro so I'm jumping out at me yet the problem for columns hibernate mapping column feature mm -hmm. Vote has an entity marked as an entity embedded ID Vote ID does this need to be on the no, oh, I don't have a getter and setter I forgot the getter and setter for the primary key Let's reboot and see if that helps. It does not. Okay, same problem. We do need the getter and setter in any case, so that's good that I saw that. Let's try putting this on the getter, the get PK. Um, again, I don't think it'll make a difference, but I usually want to stay, like I said, consistent with my um, usage of everything. Oh, look at that. It did. It met, that made the difference. I moved it down to the getter, and then it worked. Probably because I have the many to ones on the getters over here. So again, you don't mix and match, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's the reason why you don't mix and match. You get strange errors. Okay. So cool. Now we can go in and check our database. Refresh this guy, and now we have a vote table with an upvote and a two um, two uh, foreign keys to user ID and feature ID. Perfect. Excellent. So now let's do the exact same thing again, only for the other table, which is the comment table. So this one has text and then user ID, feature ID. So now we're now we're experts at this. So let's let's knock this out of the park, right? So there's a text or um, a comment entity, right? Again, let me turn off my uh, server because it's going to keep on rebooting. Private comment ID is the PK, and then it also has text as a string. We, oh, let's create our object, our comment ID object as a domain. And this will have private uh, user user, private feature feature, right? And then getters and setters for both. And then we mark these as many to one, just like we did in the other one, on the getters. And we mark this as embeddable. So the trick to remembering which one to use is whichever one shows up, right? I typed in EM and then I hit control space and the only one that came up was embeddable. So there you go, that's the one I use. That's the, that's the trick to remembering. And then on here, when we create our getters and setters, um, we go and we can type in EM and then there you see embedded ID pops up as, as the suggestion. So there we go, that's how we can remember which one of those to use. Uh, okay, now one curveball here is the text for the uh, comment. Comments can be quite long. So this is where we want to start tweaking a little bit more with our, our, uh, our uh, parameters or our properties here. I'm going to use the column annotation and this is going to allow me to um, make changes to this column. I'm going to, have, I'm going to be able to do a length. Okay, so essentially what's the maximum length of a comment someone can leave? right? Um, I'm going to pull a number out of the sky and I'm going to say 5,000 characters. Fair enough? Fair enough. So the length is 5,000. Um, oh, I don't think it needs to be a string. That's probably the... There we go. Much better. So uh, I'm just going to say 5,000 characters, okay? So again, I'm putting it on the getter. So for the text, this one is going to be bigger than normal. The normal length it assigns is 255 characters to a string. Uh, this is going to make it 5,000. Okay, anything else I need to do here? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and fire up our server and see if it creates the table. Nope, what did I forget? Oh, there you go. See, there's that error popping up. Composite ID class must implement serializable. I told you there's a reason why we did that. Um, so let's go back and implement serializable. Serializable. And generated ID. Again, it just creates a random, random ID. That's it. That's all that does. Nothing special going on there. You could have typed in your own random ID for yourself if you wanted to. Uh, okay, so now it started up correctly, it looks like, and we can go refresh our table. And there we go. We have a comment um, table on there now as well. So we have all of our four tables created and they look beautiful. They look fantastic. So now in the next video, I guess, um, I will dive into... 
uh, the GitHub stuff, okay? Because I promised I was gonna do it probably in this video, but no, it's a long video again. So next uh, video, we'll dive into how to do the GitHub stuff. Uh, this time, I, I absolutely promise I will do that. That's all I will do in the next video, and then we'll go further down our rabbit hole here and probably get into creating some controllers and stuff like that, okay? Cool. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Happy learning, as always, and bye for now.